The goal of today's session guys, the highlight of when I work with dogs, is I want to be the first person to take this dog on a proper walk. That's my goal today. Hey guys and welcome back to the Sanctuary Sessions. If we're just meeting, my name's Will Afferton. I run my own charity, the Will Afferton Canine Sanctuary, where we dedicate ourselves to helping dogs from unnecessarily being euthanized or being surrendered to shelters. Today we are volunteering our time at a shelter trying to help as many of these unfortunate dogs as possible. This beautiful boxer here was removed from an illegal puppy mill. You can probably tell by the unfortunate kind of shape of her, but we want to give her the best chance possible of not just being rehomed, but when she does get rehomed, it being a forever home. We're gonna start working her. We're gonna see if we can then get her working nicely um, walking nicely on a lead. We are gonna dive into my slip lead tune-up drill like I do with every single dog that I work because to help her anxiety, I need to let her know that she just needs to follow me. And to do that, it might seem counterintuitive, but yes, I'm going to use a slip lead drill to do so. But the first thing I wanna do, and wherever possible, I like to start any session on a high, which is exactly what we're gonna be diving into now. And I'm gonna see if she's treat driven. If a dog is food driven or treat driven, naturally it makes the process more fun and it can make the process more of a positive process for the dog but if not it doesn't stop us that's the essence of being balanced trainers as we've got many tools in the toolbox so i'm going to get her to follow this treat which she seems like she may be interested in and hopefully she'll take it from me and as is the case with many dogs well she's no so she had a lick of it and doesn't want it. This is the problem with things like positive only methodologies of training. What happens when a dog isn't food driven by treats? You start to run out of options really quickly. Now I'm gonna move on to my next option, which is seeing if she's toy driven. See if we can tap into any kind of prey drive. <laughs> and no real toy drive there either. What does that leave us with? Well, it leaves us with physical kind of praise, verbal praise, which is what I'm gonna be relying on today. Going back to what I said earlier, however, I need to be careful with physical praise. I don't know, and the likelihood is that this dog has been mistreated. Puppy mill dogs tend to be. They tend to be um, beaten and struck very commonly. So if I go to give her some fuss, stroke her behind the ears, that may trigger past memories that may lead to fear bites. So again, we have to be very, very careful and we have to build up her confidence slowly. Yeah, good. Good girl, good girl. There we go, there's that tail going. And again, yeah, oftentimes, oh yeah. It's the first time that these poor dogs, especially these females from these puppy mills, have had any kind of physical attention. And again, sometimes it freaks them out, but it looks like this girl here might be experiencing the joys of a loving leader for the very first time. We're gonna now start my tune-up drill. Now this looks like it's the first time she's ever been on a lead and that'll definitely be the first time she's ever felt any lead pressure but I want her to start understanding that I want to hear on my side. So we're going to turn, a little bit of pressure, good girl, yeah good, good girl. And the goal of today's session guys, and this is something that is the highlight of when I work with dogs and you can see I'm being very very gentle, very patient with her is I want to be the first person to take this dog on a proper walk. That's my goal today. I want to go on a pack migration with her for the very first time and let her experience the joy of a pack migration, but the joy of a pack migration that's being led by somebody that she can trust. And before I can go on that, I want to have that engagement built up, and which is exactly what I do with this tune-up drill. So we've assessed right there in that split second, potential issues. She started to lunge and pull towards the dogs. So we're gonna definitely want to be addressing that. Because picture this, if somebody wants to rehome her, especially somebody that lives where there's lots of dogs, they might fall in love with her, fall in love with her story, want to do right by her, but if every time they try and take her for a walk, she's lunging towards other dogs, it's dangerous. From years of experience of thousands of cases it's one of the most common reasons that people give up on rescue dogs send them back to the rescues and if a dog like this doesn't get the exercise that she needs it's going to be a disaster so what i want to work on before we go on this pack migration together is helping her be able to break her attention away from other dogs and remain focused on me so let's work her by these spaniels Let's go. 
Yeah, good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah, good girl. Good girl. Yes, good girl. Yes, good. Good girl. So a classic example of balance there, guys. I was trying to get her attention, bringing her attention back to me. She ignored me. So a little bit of lead pressure, but when she complied and made the right decision, then we pried on the positive reinforcement. Let's do a few more of those reps and I'll let you see kind of how quickly this can work. So high distraction. Let's go. Yeah, good girl. Oh, good girl. Yes. Good girl, good girl. She wasn't interested in food or toys. If she was, that's what I'd be giving her right now. Physical praise, you can see that little stumpy tail going mad. Good girl, yeah. Let's go. Yes! Oh, good girl. Good girl, yes. Good girl, good girl. Oh, you are a quick learner. You are a quick learner. Yes, you are. Do you have one more of those? Good girl. Let's go. Yes, good girl. Yes, good girl. Now, I'm being honest with you guys, it rarely goes this successfully. Usually, it takes more reps than this to work through situations like that with dogs. But she is a sensitive soul and is very tuned in. My trusty Fenrir slip lead, there'll be a link in the description as always. Fitted nicely where it needs to be, with good timing. Delivered from a place of love, kindness and empathy because I want her to succeed. And I think, mate, it's time to take you on your very first pack migration, which I am incredibly excited for. Now, it's no secret that I think this kind of pack migration with a dog on a loose lead is one of the most important things that all dogs need to have in their life. And it's one of the joys in my life to be the first person that's able to achieve that. Whether that's a dog that's lived in a loving home for many years, and the owners have just never been able to get to that point, or in extreme cases like this, with a dog that's been pulled from an illegal puppy mill, has probably never been out of the shed in her life. To be able to go on this experience together is absolutely phenomenal. And the reason that I'm able to run my charity and offer all of these services for dogs like this free of charge is because of each and every one of you guys that I'm able to help dogs like this and help give them the best chance possible. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe. Make sure you join us on the next episode where we'll continue working with these dogs to give them the best chance at an incredible life.